Hello everyone, welcome back to another edition of Learning English Pro. In this lesson we will be exploring lots of interesting English vocabulary relating to winter. In fact you'll find lots of really interesting English words with over 90 terms. So make sure to revise all the vocabulary with the complete word list in the description below. There's a lot of vocabulary to cover, so I'm going to break it down into three different categories. Weather, clothing, and cultural aspects of winter. So let's jump right in with our first category, which is winter weather. The main characteristic of winter weather is that it is cold. But there are lots of other words that we can use to describe the cold. Of course, we can say something simple, like it's really cold, but there are other words. We could say it is bitterly cold, or that the temperature is a bit nippy. We could also say that the temperature is quite chilly. The cold can also be described as biting. This would be a cold that you would feel quite strongly. And when it's really cold, you can get frost outside. This is the icy layer that covers everything, like grass and plants and cars. And of course, during winter, there's plenty of ice around as well. Ice covers lakes and roads and can make conditions quite dangerous. When there is ice outside in the environment, we simply say that it is icy outside. Let's take a look at some of the other words we can use to describe an icy environment. And we can also use words like frozen or frosty or freezing to describe an icy atmosphere. And another term we can use is slippery. We would say that the sidewalks, paths or roads are slippery, meaning that it's possible to fall or have an accident outside. Another aspect of winter weather is hail. Hail are pellets of frozen rain which fall in showers. And an individual piece of hail is known as a hailstone. No winter video would be complete without referencing snow. And while not everywhere will experience snow during winter, we have plenty of words to describe this weather event. When it snows, we can call the conditions snowy. And the fall of snow has its own word, snowfall. Sometimes you'll hear weatherman referring to a heavy snowfall or a light snowfall. And an individual piece of snow is known as a snowflake. If snow falls very heavily along with a strong wind, it can be known as a snowstorm. Our next term is sleet. Sleet is a mixture of rain and snow. It can be referred to as wet snow, or you'll hear someone say that the snow is very wet. We use the term melt to describe when the snow starts to disappear. When the liquid from snow mixes with dirt, we call this mixture slush. It's typically quite brown and very dirty looking. With all this cold weather, it's very vital to wear the correct clothing and use the right fabrics in wintertime. It's all about staying warm. And the first item we'll take a look at is a hat. And a cap is a popular type of hat to wear in winter to keep your head warm. And with all those wet conditions, you need to protect your feet. That's why a pair of boots are very, very essential. And in very wet weather, you may need a pair of rubber boots. That's what they're called in American English. And in British English, they're known as wellies. An important piece of clothing to keep your upper body warm is a good coat. A shorter version of a coat is known as a jacket. You will commonly hear people referring to their winter coat or their winter jacket. A piece of clothing which is commonly worn when it's snowy are the earmuffs. These are great to keep your ears warm when it snows and they're available for children and adults. A common material used in winter fabrics is fleece. This warm, fluffy material can be found in lots of different types of blankets. And when it comes to blankets at wintertime, there are lots of different options. A warm blanket that you use on your bed is known as a comforter in American English. Another type of blanket found in American culture is the quilt. This bed covering is made of different layers of fabric and kept in place with lines of stitching. 
A blanket which is filled with feathers and commonly found in European countries is the duvet. This is a French term, so we don't pronounce the T here. Duvet. Getting back to clothing, our next term is gloves. These are really essential for keeping your hands warm. Another type of glove which you'll find in wintertime are mittens. These are gloves with two sections, one for your thumb and the other for all four fingers. Our next term is British English, the jumper. And of course, this is a garment you wear on your upper body and it typically has long sleeves and you put it on over your head. In American English, it is known as a sweater. A sweater which is very common in the wintertime is the turtleneck. This is an American term for a sweater with a high collar. In British English, it is known as a polo neck. Something which a lot of the items of clothing we've discussed have in common is that they are made of wool. This is the fabric that we get from a goat or a sheep or a similar animal. Items of clothing made from wool can be described as woolen or as knitwear. My favourite piece of knitwear at wintertime is the scarf. This is a piece of fabric which we wear around our necks and on our chest to keep us warm. And to keep your feet nice and toasty, you'll need a very good pair of socks. And for around the house, you can get a good pair of slippers. They are really useful, particularly when it's very, very cold. Our final piece of clothing before moving on to our next category is the hoodie. A hoodie is a sports top and the most important aspect is that it has a hood. This is the part that goes over your head and lots of jackets and coats will also have a hood to protect you on a rainy or stormy day. Our final category is where we will take a look at how winter affects our culture and language as well as different items we associate with wintertime. In the Northern Hemisphere, the season of winter covers the months of December, January and February, while in the Southern Hemisphere, it covers the months of June, July and August. The season of winter can also be known as wintertime. In nature, evergreen trees such as the spruce or fir are some of the trees which maintain their green colour and are associated with winter culture. We call these types of trees evergreen trees. Also in nature, plenty of animals such as bears and bats go through a process called hibernation. This is where the animal goes into a dormant state during the winter time. And with the changing position of the sun, nighttime hours grow longer. And most countries around the world change clocks. This is done in winter time to add additional hours of daylight during the working day. Lots of our winter vocabulary focuses on cold weather and keeping warm. So it's no surprise that fire has lots of associations with winter. And a domestic fire can take place in the fireplace. The fireplace can usually be found in a living room area or in a kitchen. And we use firewood or coal as fuel for a fire. The smoke from a fire will emerge from a chimney and a chimney can usually be found on the roof of a house. If you don't have a fireplace, you might have a heating system. With some heating systems, you may have one or more radiators around your house. Radiator is a term from British English, while we can use the word heater more generally. Houses in colder climates will also need insulation. Materials like fiberglass can be packed into the walls and in the roofs of homes to keep them warm by trapping heat in the house. Next up, let's check out some sports associated with winter. First up, we have ice hockey, which is hugely popular in Canada and the United States of America. And our next sport is skiing, which is quite similar to snowboarding. And if you like to get out on the ice, ice skating could be for you. A huge aspect of culture at wintertime is, of course, Christmas and the mythological character of Santa Claus. In fact, there's so much vocabulary relating to Christmas and the holiday season that I've given it its own playlist. The link for this huge playlist is on screen right now, and I've also linked all the videos in the description below. 
So make sure to check those out to really boost your Christmas English vocabulary. Other important religious and cultural celebrations held in wintertime include Hanukkah, the winter solstice, Kwanzaa, Chinese horoscopes, and the Three Kings Day. Another big moment for celebration is New Year's Eve on December 31st. And of course, we have to mention St. Valentine's Day, a day celebrating love of all types held on February the 14th. Let's move on to some useful items you can use in wintertime, like the sledge. A sledge is a simple vehicle on runners which can convey passengers over snow and ice, and it looks like a lot of fun as well. Another handy item to have at hand is the snow shovel. In snowy climates, you'll often see people use their snow shovel to clear their driveway. And our final item is the umbrella. It might not be too great when it snows, but for all the rain that can occur in wintertime, it's definitely an essential item. And that brings us to the end of this English vocabulary list on winter. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to check out the word list in the description below. Click here for my holiday season playlist and click here for an English lesson on vocabulary relating to spring. The link to subscribe to my YouTube channel Learning English Pro is also on screen. Have a fantastic day and remember, keep learning English like a pro.